signing day of BDC. Huh? Oh, yeah? yeah? I got some players? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. All right. It's always strange to me this is signing day. Uh -huh. in de signing days in December. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah, but uh, hey, just, uh, you know, where are you all at heading into San Francisco? Uh, uh, you know, with the offensive uh, side of the ball, been able to run the ball the last three games so far. I think it's, you know, you talk about the run game, I think it's been productive for us uh, the last couple of weeks. And, you know, it's something that we've continued to hammer away at all season and chip away at it in practice. And um, certainly done a nice job uh, up front, you know, and, and in the backfield getting that uh, run game going for us. And uh, it's certainly going to be another point of emphasis again this week. We're going against a defense that's uh, strong and physical, good linebackers, good front four. Um, and they're aggressive, and so uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us. And what about, um, you know, when you look over there, you see both, uh, yeah, that's obvious, and Fred Warner, a lot of people don't know about him. All they get them is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> they should. But what about Fred and, and uh, you know, him uh, being the guy that's going to try to be shutting down or not yet? Uh, he's a very good player. Fred's a, a really good player, athletic, um, you know, has, has really good speed. Uh, he's physical, uh, he's instinctive. You know, I think that's, that's one of the things when, when you watch him play, he has good instinct both in the run game and the pass game. Uh, and then you mentioned Bosa up front. I mean, really good um, edge setter for them, really good pass rusher. I think he has like 12 sacks or something like that. So um, he's, he's done a nice job. Six? 14. 14, yeah. <laughs> Positive thinking on my end. <laughs> yeah, two of them, I guess. But uh, yeah, he's um, he's he's a really good player, and he's improved a lot uh, since you know played against him in the past. And uh, I think he's developed into you know really physical player, really good pass rusher, very talented. So again, you know, two guys we've got to be aware of where they're at, and uh, we certainly have to uh, uh, do a good job making sure we're communicating, getting guys on them. In their secondary, Arvin Thomas had to play last week because Dante's mom, mom passed away. Uh, but when they're at full strength, how does that group look back there? Uh, yeah, it's it's a group that they've had different guys playing at different times, you know. And so um, I think they're talented, you know. They're, across the board, they've got they've got good players there, and they sync up well with what they do in the front end. Uh, and and I think you see guys who uh, do a great job of recognizing patterns. Uh, are aggressive, you know, in, in breaking on the ball. They've done a nice job as a team of creating turnovers, both interceptions and punching the ball out. So, um, you know, I think their secondary is, is good. Uh, anything, what difference do the building stuff for you guys? Uh, I mean, other than some COVID protocols, you know, it's business as usual. Um, you know, I think the, the one thing that, you know, having done it for the last two years, you learn to be flexible and, and, you know, we have certain setups to handle when this kind of stuff happens and, and you have to, you know, make the best of it. And I think Art's done a good job of, of spacing things out, doing some stuff virtual. Uh, and I think the guys have done a good job of locking in, you know, when you need to lock in. How much has been virtual versus in person? I mean, for some of the guys, for me, it's, it's all been in person. We've got the barn uh, out here, which is nice for us to be able to use as a meeting space where you can space out and uh, and social distance or you know whatever. And um, I think Art's done a good job with that. Is that for you going to be unfortunate? I guess probably not seeing Mike on the other side. Yeah, I'm bummed for him. You know, obviously, um, I, I always pull for him. You know, to play well, to be healthy, and you know, I know he was bummed uh, to have the season over with the injury and. Um, you know, but he, he's got a lot of years ahead of him, you know, a lot of good football in front of him. I'm, I'm convinced of that and, um, you know, bummed he's, he's not able to play. Were there initial plans for a giant family gathering in San Francisco that had to get canceled or? Uh, I mean, the injury was kind of a long time ago. So, um, and I think with just COVID and everything, I think, uh, I don't think it's probably as big as the last time we were out there. Or what you are trying to accomplish? 
You know, I, I don't think it changes. I, I think um, you, you go into it with the mindset that whatever we have to do, we've got to do to win. And whether that's being thrown at 50 times, uh, running it 50 times, whatever that is, you know, you have to, you have to find a way to get it done. Um, but as far as, you know, approaching week to week any different, for me, it's the same. You know, it's, it's trying to find uh, the right spot to go with the football, uh, with the plays we have called, and with the coverages that they're going with. And so uh, whether it's emphasizing wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, whatever that is, it's, it's always a little bit different every week with what you're trying to attack. But from a mindset standpoint, uh, I try and keep it pretty simple for me. You know, be out there, make sure I'm getting us in the right plays and trying to go with the right spot with the ball. Well, you know, I think, um, you know, obviously we'd like to have one turnover back uh, that, w that we had the other afternoon. But, you know, protecting the football, um, you know, pretty well, uh, making a point of emphasis of that. But also, you know, I talked a lot, you know, a couple weeks ago about backside combination blocks. And um, it's, it's guys, you know, it's, it's not anything magic. It's guys understanding that, that those things are important. And the effort that they're giving in there uh, has been really good. I also think you know, understanding situations. You look at the end of the game, you know, with, with Kyle as a rookie player, you know, getting the first down, kind of winding back in, protecting the football, uh, keeping the clock running. Uh, end of half last week, you know, I know some people, you could want to be aggressive or whatever, but the game, the way the game was shaken out, you know, with the lead that we have, it's end and a half with the football sometimes is okay. Uh, you know, and, and not giving them anything. I think uh, the last couple of weeks, we've, we've done a decent job of that. Last year, you guys was two and eight in one score games, and, and fast forward to this year, you were six and two. You know, being that you experienced both, like, what is like, what is the kind of feel and vibe you get from just a game plan, play calling, or whatever, versus last year to this year? Now, now that being that you all were successful in those close games. Yeah, I think you know, for me, it's it's probably not all that different. I mean, I think that it it comes down. I've always said it. You know, the the margin for error in this league is is razor thin, you know, and, and so the difference is a handful of plays here. I think across the board, we've done a good job situationally uh, for the most part, you know, in those, what is it, six and two, in those eight games of, you know, end in halves with the ball, finishing two minute drives at the end of games. We've had a few of those um, doing a good job in some four minute drives that we've had, you know, not giving the ball back or bleeding time to kick field goals at the end to win. You know, those, those things matter. And, um, you know, in this league where there's such competitive balance, you know, if you can do those little things right situationally, uh, it, it, it leads to those wins. And I think for the most part in, in those one-score games, we've done a nice job. And Coach, I asked Coach about, you know, how to, how to play action, I mean, how to run a game, being successful running game helps him out. And he basically said he, he just off, off, off kilter. Like, for you as a quarterback, how, what does that do for you, being that, you know, y'all been able to run the ball so successful for the past few games? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it does. It keeps the defense aligned out of rhythm. And, uh, you know, when they when they don't have the chance to just pin their ears back and know it's going to be drop back pass, uh, it makes it, you know, more difficult for them uh, when they've got to defend both. They can't just pin their ears back and go because they've got runs, you know, run fits and gaps they have to protect. And that makes a big difference. You know, this, this league is uh, about slowing down those guys on the other side of the ball and uh, finding ways to do that. And uh, running the football has certainly helped with that. It's very significant, you know, for, for us as a team, they're all going to be this way, you know, moving forward if we handle our business. And so uh, we understand, you know, the position we're in. Um, but we also know, you know, you can't control the next three games. It's, it's really just about taking care of business this week, extending our opportunity to, to be relevant. And, um, you know, I'm excited about that. It's fun. It's fun to be this time of the year to be in games that matter and games that have consequences. And um, you know, I'm excited for that opportunity. We heard from some of the guys after Sunday that that was the first day that you guys were kind of in this playoff mentality that you need to finish all these games off. How do you kind of teach that to the younger guys who maybe haven't been in that position for you? Yeah, I think you know, I, I think you don't have to do anything crazy. You just have to do what you're being asked to do really well. Uh, and do it over and over and over. 
uh, and understand that, you know, uh, play one of the game is just as significant as snap, you know, 65. Um, they all are important. And, you know, for young players, the, the more you can develop that mindset every week, um, the better off we're going to be. Yeah, I think, you know, he's, he's very good at that, you know, staying the course and continuing to work the things we started working on when we got together in April, um, you know, and starting to see takes time, but starting to see some of those things, you know, improve and get better. And um, it's a, you know, it's it, it things don't happen overnight, you know, as much as, as you would like them to. And I think it takes time to, you know, continue to build and get better and, um I give credit to Arthur for, for kind of, you know, keeping that mindset of, of growth and improvement and being better this time of the year than we were at the beginning. And I also give credit to the players. It's not always easy when things aren't going well to, to stay the course, to believe in, um, you know, in, in the process that we have. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the guys for doing that. Uh, each year is different. You know, each offense I've been a part of is different. You know, you're uh, a lot of a lot of how you play is the guys that you have uh, and featuring the, the players that are in the building. And, you know, with the way that you're built, you try and feature and get the ball in, in those players hands. And so at different times at my career, it's been really heavy run emphasis. I think of early in my career with Mike Turner. Um, you know, it, it was very much based on the run. And then there were years kind of in the middle where, uh, you know, where we had Roddy, where we had Julio, where we had Tony Gonzalez, Harry Douglas, and it might have been a little bit more pass oriented. I think it comes down to, to the guys that you have uh, and coaches finding the ways to give you the best opportunity to win week in and week out. Um, you know, but uh, the one thing that has stayed the same my entire time in the league is that the game, you know, is really wins and losses are dictated up front on both sides of the ball, you know, and that part has been the same since, you know, before I've been around, you know, it's, it's been that, that, that way forever. The guys up front are so important. So offense, in, from your perspective, has been less of a reaction to what you're seeing from defenses and more about just whoever's in your building. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's the balance of both, you know, who you're going against, but I think more often than not, you have to, you got to play with the guys that you have and you have to, you know, think players uh, and, and, you know, that kind of stuff over plays sometimes in situations. You want, you know, you want your guys touching the ball and, and having the ball in space with, with uh, the ability to make plays. And um, I think every team's different. You know, I really do. And so I think that for me personally, I think that's more how I view it. Yeah, I think, you know, I think one of the beauties of experience is that kind of going back to Josh's question is that I've, I've kind of, I've done it, you know, I've done it where you've had to throw it 55 times and, you know, at the end of the day, you, you got to find a way to win. And so if it's not working and, and that's the direction we have to go in order to win, I'm comfortable doing that. No question about it. And uh, if it is about running the ball and being physical and, and making it that kind of game, I'm comfortable in that role too. Uh, nothing really. I mean, he texted me last night. Uh, they were watching, he was watching film of our defense. And I guess there was a clip of uh, Trevor Lawrence threw and I tried to catch one on the sideline. It was coming in a little hotter than I thought. <laughs> uh, dropped it. He was like, that was terrible. So that's really the only correspondence I had with him. I texted him back this morning. I was like, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Not really. You know, it's it's 
it's not, at least my relationship with him is not that way. You know, it's, we keep in touch and, um, but, you know, I think we both know what we have to do this week. And uh, there's, at least on my end, and I know from his end too, I mean, there's a lot of respect that goes both ways. Matt, uh, speaking of defense, you talk about uh, they've been able to put some points on the board the past couple of games. Uh, how does it, what does that do for you as a, as a leader of the team and as a quarterback? How does that help you out? It's awesome. You know, it's, uh, it's great when, you're, when your defense is creating turnovers, scoring uh, like they have the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's unaccounted for, you know, points uh, from the offensive side of the ball where, you know, seven more points that, you know, we didn't, we didn't have to do anything to put up. And, and they've done a great job. Um, I think it's a group that's gotten better as the year's gone on too. And we talk all the time about playing together and everybody doing their job because it helps uh, somebody else's responsibilities and playing as a unit. And uh, I think you're seeing that come to life with some of the turnovers. They're, uh, they're, they're really doing a good job of, of staying in scheme and, and, and playing well. He's the, you know, obviously the experienced guy been, you know, Super Bowl winner, um, coordinator and everything. Like, did you see that coming? Like, him coming in, being able to, you know, come in and implement a new defense and then just kind of gradually progress throughout the, the year to where they're actually putting up an unaccountable point from yeah, I think, you know, I, I played against them, and so I know how tough they were to go against, and um, just his reputation as a coach of of creating really good defensive units and guys that play hard. Um, you know, so I, I always had a lot of respect from afar, not knowing Dean well, uh, of of him as a coach, and I think when you're around him day to day, and uh, you see how he works with the guys, interacts with the guys, you know. I'm not surprised. You know, I, I I think he's he's worked really hard and he's coached these guys really well to to get them playing at a high level. Anything else? When you committed to BC, what was your hype video like? Man, it was a different time back then. There, were, <laughs> there weren't hype videos. It was I think it was in February back at least when I did it. We were in the uh, gym, in the gym at my high school, and so the way we did it was all the kids that were signing letters of intent kind of signed together at Penn Charter, and it was a fun day, but. Um, but it, yeah, there were no hats. No, it was just uh, it was different. It was just a different time. Who was your second choice? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I was. I really. I, I was. I was between Iowa and Boston College, and um, Kirk Ferentz was still there. He was. He was kind of a younger coach at the time uh, when they were recruiting me. But uh, he was maybe second or third year there as a coach, and. I went out and visited with my dad and uh, loved it. And um, but you know, fell second to BC. So I'm happy with uh, how things worked out. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.